Hello, this is Domenico with Easynomics, and we're going to look at calculating price elasticity of demand and total revenue. For our applied example, we're going to use insulin, one vial of insulin um, in this article. Insulin List Pro used to cost $21.1999, and in 2019, 20 years later, rose to $332, a significant increase in price. And further below in this article, it states that the number one reason for the high cost of insulin is the presence of a vulnerable population that needs insulin to survive. This, uh, this population, which numbers in the millions, is willing to pay anything to have access to a life-saving drug. So any economist would recognize immediately that that is, by definition, a very inelastic demand curve. Um, in terms of the quantity of consumers, in 2018, there were an estimated 1.6 million Americans that had type 1 diabetes, which included 187,000 children and adolescents. And in this other article, it estimated that there were about 1.3 million U.S. adults that were suffering from type 1 diabetes. So you can see I'm going to use some of that data um, in our calculation. So I'm just going to close this and get to our graph. So here we have our graph for the market for one vial of Humalog Insulin List Pro. We're measuring price on the y-axis and quantity on the x-axis. Uh, we have a price is set, $19.99 at $21, with we're going to make an assumption that the quantity of consumption at, at Q1 was 1.6 million people. And then 20 years later, it rises to $332. We're going to assume that the quantity of consumption fell to 1.3 million at Q2. It uh, should also be noted that it's estimated, unfortunately, that the number of Americans that will suffer from type 1 diabetes will increase to about 5 million by the year 2050. So on a paper one, I'm sorry, on a paper two, paper three, you would be asked to calculate PED with data provided. They might give you a graph with data points where they might give you a table of price and quantity data points and with that that's enough to calculate price elasticity of demand. So PED, price elasticity of demand, is equal to the percent change and the quantity demanded divided by the percent change in price. And we want to remember that percent change equal to the final value minus the initial value divided by the initial value multiplied by 100. This is our initial value, our initial quantity, our final quantity. Here's our initial price. And this is our final price. So we can just go ahead and plug in those numbers to calculate the PED. And if you want, you can pause the video and see if your calculations correspond with mine. All right, so to calculate this, it would be final value of 1.3 million minus the initial value of 1.6 million, M for million, divided by the initial 1.6 million, and that multiplied by 100. This would be divided by $332 minus $21 divided by $21 multiplied by 100. I'm going to go ahead and put in the dollar sign so we remember that here we're, count, we're calculating the percent change in the price. So what does that work out to? Works out to negative 300,000 divided by 1.6 M for million. This divided by 300 should put negative. Oops, sorry. Nope, it's not negative. I made a mistake. 311 divided by $21. That works out to negative 0.18 
which we still need to multiply by 100, which we haven't done yet. This divided by 14.8095 multiplied by 100. So I'm going to just draw a line down here to continue our calculations. And that works out to, if we multiply this, 0.1875 multiplied by 100, then we have PED being equal to negative 18.75% over 1,480.95%. So what does that tell me? That tells me that when I increase price by 1,480.95%, I've lost, in terms of the quantity of consumption, 18.75% of my consumers. And that continues to work out to this. PED equals 0 0.0126. I'm going to look at the second significant decimal value and just say it's 0 0.01. PED equals 0 0.01. So PED equals, it's actually negative, equals negative 0 0.01. What does that tell me? Again, remember that this is equal to the percent change in the quantity demanded over the percent change in the price. So this tells me that it's 0 0.01 over 1, meaning that for every 1% increase in price, the quantity demanded falls by 0 .0, uh, 0 0.01%. All right, that should be clear. PED 0 0.01, which is 0 0.01 over 1. Every 1% 1 change in price leads to a 0 0.01 change in the quantity of demand. Now, we notice that the absolute value of PED is 0 0.01, which means it's less than 1. Whenever PED is less than 1, it is inelastic. And if it's an elastic, that should mean that the percent change in price is greater than the percent change in the quantity demanded, which we clearly see here. The percent change in price clearly larger than the percent decrease in quantity. We also see that visually that the distance, the distance between P1 and P2 is greater than the distance between Q1 and Q2. And it should hold that if we are to increase price along an inelastic demand curve, that the total revenue should also increase. So next, we're gonna to calculate total revenue. And that could be another type of uh, question on an exam asking you to calculate total revenue. So let's go ahead and calculate that. All right, and just keep our PED value up here. PED, after all these calculations, equal to 0.01. All right, so total revenue, our initial total revenue, TR1 is P1 times Q1, price times quantity. And that works out to $21 multiplied by 1.6 million. And that works out to 36, I'm sorry, 33 million 600 thousand. Our next total revenue, when we raise the price, is equal to P2 times Q2. And I can also make a note, we've seen this in previous PED values, uh, videos. P1 times Q1 is equal to the surface areas of A plus B. And at total of 2, that's equal to the areas C plus A. So the new price of $332 multiplied by 1.3 million price times quantity equals 
$431, I'm sorry, $431,600,000. Okay, so clearly we can see that as we raise price, total revenue does rise because the PED is less than one, which means that the percent change in price is greater than the percent decrease in the quantity demanded. So total revenue was originally 33,600,000 and then it's increased to 431,600,000. So yes, it holds. PED, when it's less than one, you raise price, total revenue does rise. So let's do one more type of potential paper two, paper three type of calculation. Here's a question that you could have by a which will require that you apply your knowledge of PED. And it would be something like this. Calculate the sales revenue is essentially asking what's the total revenue if all firms that sell this insulin collectively raise price by 120%. So price is going to increase by 120%. What's the total revenue going to be? So first we got to raise the price. And so let's visualize what's going to happen here. Let me get rid of these points. And we're going to start at price of $21 with quantity of consumption at 1.6 million. And we're going to try to see that when we raise price by 120%, what's the new quantity and what's that total revenue? So first, let's calculate the increase in price. There's two ways to do that. We're going to take $21 multiplied by 1.2. So 1.2 is the decimal value of 120% equals $25.20. And I'm going to add that to the initial $21. That equals... Price has risen to $46.20. Same thing, you could do 21 multiplied by 2.2 to save me some of that work. And that works out to $46.20. So a 120% increase in price is $46. And so that is taking us to something like this, to perhaps this point. I'm going to call this P3, I'll call it point C, and here is Q3, and I want to know what's the quantity going to be so that I can calculate total revenue. All right, so that is 46. We can write that in there. I think it's a little bit off the edge, but anyway, P3 is... $46.20, right? That's what this value is here. This is what we've calculated. Now we gotta calculate this. So we gotta go back and use PED. PED PED I'm going to keep the negative value, equals negative 0 0.01. For every 1% increase in price, I lose 0.01% of my customers. And I want to be mindful, again, right, we want to remember that that's equal to the percent change in the quantity demanded over the percent change in price. And we know what the percent change in price is. It's right here. So it's going to be over 120%. So I need to solve for the percent change of quantity demanded. This is what I'm solving for. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, so if I want to figure that out, what is percent change of quantity demanded? I can multiply this by 120%. Those cancel, and then I can carry it over to here. Time. So that works out to 120% times negative 0 0.01 equals 0 0.012. So 
Okay. And multiply that by 100, that tells me what the percent change is. And that's a 1.2% change. That is my percent change in the quantity of demand. Another way to calculate that is I can take the decimal value of 120%, which is 1.2 times negative 0 0.01. That equals 0 0.012. Then times 100 equals 1.2 percent. I should say decrease, and that is the percent change in the quantity demanded. So here I have kind of the values that I need. PED, right? It equals negative 0 0.01, which is equal to. So we have 1.2. Negative 1.2% divided by the 120% decrease, I'm sorry, 120% increase in price. So 1.2 divided by 120, yes, that does equal 0 0.01. So I did my calculations correctly. And so I know, now I know I need to reduce the quantity of demand by 1.2%. I have to figure out what is 1.2% of 1.6 million so I can figure out what this number is. Okay? So that's going to be my next step. So what is a 1.2% decrease in 1.6 million? So I'm going to take the value 1.6 million multiplied by negative 0 0.012. I want to get a 1.2% decrease in 1.6 million, which the decimal value is 0 0.012. And that works out to 19,200. I have to subtract 19,200 from 1.6 million to get a 1.2% decrease. So 1.6 million minus 19,200 equals 1,580,800. So that's essentially my value for QD3, right? Or Q3, I should say, Q3. So Q3, I figured out, and now I can do price times quantity. I did it. So let's do the last calculation to answer this question. I've raised price by 120%. I get a 1.2% decrease in the quantity of demand, taking me from 1.6 million to 1.5808 million. So what is total revenue? So it's going to be the increased price. Total revenue is P3 times Q3, and that's going to be equal to $46.20 times 1,580,800. Okay, and that works out to $73,032,900. Okay. So we can see that we've calculated total revenue, and we also see that as we raise price, total revenue has increased following that inelastic demand curve. All right, and that's it. There we have applied our knowledge. And I'll just end with a little note here, and then we'll be done. So PED equals negative 0.01. And in terms of this question, it is negative 0 0.01 is equal to a 1.2% decrease in the quantity of consumption as a result of a 120% increase in price. If you have any questions, you can comment. I'll provide full notes and outlines on what you've seen in this video in the information section below the video. And don't forget to subscribe and to like. Thank you so much.